Hello friends, this video on chemical coordination and integration part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now look at the mechanism of hormone action that is how exactly the hormone acts inside our body. Now I had actually given you a brief uh, introduction to how our hormone acts in our body. Now in order to understand it more clearly, let us first try to understand what are the different groups of hormones which are present inside our body. We saw many different hormones, we talked about the thyroid hormones, the adrenal hormones, the corticoids, so many hormones we spoke about. Now if you consider all the hormones, they can be divided into four groups. The protein hormones or the peptide hormones steroid hormones, thyroid hormones and the amino acid derivatives. So these are the four classes into which all the types of hormones can be grouped. So when you say protein hormones, obviously they will have some protein structures. So examples of protein hormones would be the glycoproteins which are secreted from the anterior pituitary or it could be the pancreatic hormones that we spoke about the islet of Langerhans, right? Insulin, glucagon. So they are all the pancreatic hormones. So they are also protein hormones. Now, why are they divided into these four classes based on their structure? Now, those hormones whose structures are similar to the proteins or which contain a lot of peptides. So they are protein or peptide hormones. Similarly, those hormones which have cholesterol group with them, they will be steroid. So those which have something, which have some amino acid in them, they will be amino acid derivatives. So that means based upon their structure, they have been grouped under these classes. So in the protein hormones, the digestive tract hormones will also fall under this. Now examples of some of the protein hormones would be insulin, glucagon, thyroid stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. They all fall under the category of the protein hormone. Let us look at the steroid hormone. These are those hormones which are derived from cholesterol, right? So cholesterol are what? They are the, they, they fall under the category of fats. So examples of such hormones would be cortisol, which is a corticoid, testosterone, progesterone, which are the male and the female hormones secreted by the testis and the ovaries respectively. Thyroid hormones, examples of thyroid hormones would be iodothyronines so they have the thyronine group with them and also iodine so the t3 t4 hormones they fall under the category of thyroid hormones now these thyroid hormones are also derivative of amino acid however they are not direct derivative of amino acid that is why they have been grouped separately but otherwise if uh, in some of the textbooks you will see that thyroid hormones have been put under amino acid derivative because they are also uh, a derivative of an amino acid indirectly amino acid derivatives they are derived from the amino acid tyrosine so this tyrosine is an amino acid. So any structure where the basic structure is tyrosine and in that tyrosine only a lot of other groups are added. So that is how the, those uh, hormone structures are. So examples are the catecholamines. Catecholamines examples epinephrine or dopamine. They are all amino acid derivatives. So broadly these are the different groups of hormones. Now the question is why am I talking about these different group of hormones? Because each group of hormone have a specific way of action so not every hormone follow the same mechanism for its action so different groups of hormones will have different action of mechanism so we will see that so in order to understand the first step for any hormone to act is that there has to be a receptor who can receive the hormone or who can recognize the hormone Right? For example, if you are sending a letter to somebody, so what do you need to do? You need to put the correct postal address of that person so that there is some address which can actually receive your letter. Right? So similar is the case here. So the hormones, all the hormones are flowing through the blood, but there has to be receptors, there has to be specific addresses inside the body which can receive specific hormones. So those specific addresses are the receptors. So first let us try to understand what are hormone receptors. So hormones act on target tissues by binding to hormone receptors. Now wherever the receptor is present, the hormone will bind to that receptor, right? And then it will actually act on that particular tissue. So for any specific hormone, let us suppose there is one hormone which has to act on the thyroid. So the receptor of that hormone which should present on the thyroid gland. 
so that is how it is so wherever you wherever your target tissue is there only your hormone receptor should be present only then your hormone can act on the target tissue for example let us suppose this is my hormone okay now this hormone has to act on this organ this is some organ okay now there has to be a receptor if there is no receptor this hormone will not be able to bind here so the hormone will just move on ignoring this organ but if there is a receptor here which can receive this hormone so the hormone will bind to the receptor and that is how the hormone will act on this organ so a hormone receptor is a must for hormone to act so it is somewhat like this your plus puzzle block so you have the, the red one is, is your the red one is your hormone and the green one is the hormone receptor so wherever the hormone receptor is there the hormone will go and bind to the receptor so hormone receptors are structure wise they are protein molecules on the target cells that bind to hormones with high affinity so they have a very strong attraction to bind to hormones now it is not that all receptors can bind to all hormones there are specific receptors which can bind to specific hormones for example in the blood you might have so many different types of hormones say hormone a b c d e but if the receptor here is for hormone b then only the hormone B can bind to it. If hormone A tries to bind to it, it will not be able to. So the binding between hormones and receptors is also specific. Now receptors are very specific in nature and this is very very important because if you don't know this point then you actually will not be able to understand the concept because not every hormone can bind to every receptor so they, it, they, they are very specific that this hormone can bind only to this receptor this receptor will bind only to this hormone so that thing is very specific there are two types of receptors again one is membrane bound receptors what are membrane bound receptors these are those receptors which are present on the cell membranes of target cell so let us suppose this is your target tissue so the target tissue will made up of many cells so the cell membrane they will all those cells will have a cell membrane now if the receptor is present on the cell membrane of the target cell they are called membrane bound receptors so that means the hormone will bind to this receptor on the membrane itself there is another type of receptors called intracellular receptors that means the receptors are present inside the target cell that means instead of the surface the receptor will not be present here instead the receptor will be present somewhere here inside the target cell that is called intracellular receptors now we will see how does it matter how does it differ when a hormone binds to a membrane bound receptor and when a hormone binds to a intracellular receptor how the situation differs in both the cases thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors Thank you once again.